What's going on guys? Welcome back into the film room. I'm your host Eric Turner. Obviously running solo today after day nine at Bill's training camp out at St. John Fisher University. Not college, almost said college. When I was there, it was college. Uh, but I'm actually just rolling through Brockport right now. Figured I'd give you some of my takeaways. Um, but if you guys are insiders, if you subscribe to our premium content, you've been already caught up because you've followed along live on our live blog, our live post on the website. Become a One Pass insider. And we're gonna have a lot more of those posts. All of our social media platforms are gonna be, during the season, are gonna be recorded in that live blog, in that live post. Uh, so to follow along with us at practice or games during the season, you're gonna have to become a subscriber. You're gonna have to become an insider. And we have a ton of content there. We have the glossary where Kendall, Anthony and I break down some terms, some concepts. Uh, Greg's doing an awesome series on Salary Cap 101 and all the different terms uh, that come uh, with the salary cap and roster construction. So on top of all of the writers that we brought on this season for a run at the championship, we have some great writers that are going to be contributing this year and have started already. So if you're not a One Pass subscriber, I suggest you do it. And of course, we appreciate if you would do it because honestly, we couldn't do this without you guys. Uh, it allows us to have access to the memberships uh, that it needs to provide that in-depth content for you guys. So with that said, let's get to some of the takeaways. Today was a heavy situational football day. A lot of backed up situations. So with the offense, with their backs to their own goal line, inside the five yard line, inside the seven yard line. Uh, we had a lot of third and short uh, third and one short yardage situations uh, from the offensive defenses. Uh, then we had some like third and medium calls. So we got to see some really cool exotic type looks with players in different positions. Uh, so today was situational football. It's a really muggy day. And I thought for the most part, the defense won the practice. Um, the offense, uh, it just, they looked a little sluggish. They didn't get much movement up front, which is no surprise there. Ryan Bates was back at practice. Uh, but he was rolling in with the second and third teams. The starting offensive line from the beginning of practice till pretty much the end was Dawkins, uh, Bobby Hart, Mitch Morse, Cody Ford, and then uh, Questenberry on, at right tackle. And then everyone else kind of rolled in. So uh, there was no surprise there when it came to not getting a lot of movement up front. And from the offense, we saw a lot of power concepts. So actual gap concepts like power, their Cobra calls, uh, that they had last year uh, with a pulling guard getting up inside and leading the play. Um, their duo calls, obviously a power or gap run without a puller. Uh, a lot of those short yardage type run concepts that we're gonna see when the Bills need to get a yard, when they need to get two yards in those short yardage situations. And in those situations, it was Zach Moss all day as the first running back uh, in the goal line, in the red zone, on those short yardage plays. He was the lead back that was in there. And uh, I know a lot of people are upset with, uh, you know, his play from last year, but if there's one role that it's gotta be Zach Moss and he's gotta fill it, it's those red zone, short yardage uh, situations where they gotta have a yard and he's their, you know, power back, especially with those power concepts and some of those uh, duo runs. Uh, but as I said, the defense dominated for most of the day uh, and especially in those run segments, I mean, we're talking about a linebacker in Tremaine Edmonds that was everywhere. Early in practice and some of the passing segments, the Bills defense was just making Josh Allen work through his progressions, taking away those first and second reads, making him get to the check down or third option uh, on these pass concepts. And Tremaine Edmonds was just aggressive. He's he, exactly playing like Bills fans want to see him play. Anytime there was a short underneath route, he was jumping it and forced Josh Allen to uh, move on his progression. That happened really early in practice where there was uh, a short uh, in-breaking route uh, from the left side of the formation uh, in the hook to curl area and Tremaine moved from, moved from the middle of the field and just jumped it, took it away, forced Josh Allen to go all the way back to his right as he was moving left to right um, and, and, and check it down. Uh, but in the run segments, I mean, those third and, and one situations, if you go look at the live post, the live blog that I did, I mean, every other play was Tremaine Edmonds shutting down the run. 
the defensive line, the guys in front of him, whether it's Daquan Jones, Ed Oliver, who were primarily the first team D tackles, they were just keeping Edmonds clean and he was executing those run throughs, exactly what fans want to see. And with him being clean, he was just firing his gun for a majority of the day, he made a lot of stops in the back backfield, a lot of tackle for losses. Anytime that he shot the gap and the running back was able to bounce it wide, you'd see Milano there, you'd see a safety coming down from depth to shut down the edge. The Bills defense just dominated most of those run segments until they got into the red zone segment, which was right at the back end of practice. The offense uh, got the ball spotted at the one yard line and uh, the Bills had some really nice segments there where they did get into the end zone. Again, Zach Moss led uh, in most of those segments, but when Motor got in, he had a really nice cutback for uh, a would-be touchdown as well. So um, again, I think the defense did some really cool things, especially in those third down situations. There were plays where the defensive end, defensive ends were bumping inside at D tackle. I saw Basham in there. I saw Rousseau in at defensive tackle on one particular play where it was him uh, just lined up inside the right tackle and in a two point stance. And then Von Miller bounced out wide in a two point stance. And I mean, if the Bills can move Rousseau around, not just Miller, if they can move Rousseau around like we saw the Hurricanes do in college, Man, he is going to be a matchup problem because he's thicker this year and his moves, like on this play specifically, I can't remember who he's up against, but again, they were both in wide alignments, Miller and Rousseau, and he went to a power move, but it was more of a power swipe. And I mean, he just beat the hands of this interior offensive lineman. And it was, it was so powerful though, you know, normally with his long arms, He's he's getting it early with that swipe and he's getting the hand usage early But this was a power swipe and it just really threw the interior offensive lineman off balance and Rousseau won the short edge If the Bills can move Rousseau around that is something to keep an eye on because you heard Ed Oliver talk about Having him and Miller on the same side and being opposite him at times and how that is almost a mismatch waiting to happen because of how offensive lines have to shift their protection to Miller but Rousseau's that wild card. You know, if they can move him around and not have him opposite Von Miller just playing contain as Von Miller disrupts, if he can be a proactive player, boy, watch out. Because with his strength and ability to play inside, I know Calais Campbell was his mentor, you know, going into the draft and throughout the draft process. If he can start to do some of that stuff uh, physically inside at the NFL level, not the collegiate level, Man, he is a huge wild card, and uh, using other of those other edge rushers as those contained players on the other side, man, that's going to be tough for offensive lines to match up with. Um, but as I said today, I'd say Edmonds was a standout on defense, on offense, uh, a lot of Zach Moss. Uh, as far as uh, you know, Poyer being out, uh, the first safety in technically was Jaqu Jaquan Johnson, but they were rolling. Hamlin and him and even Hyde was being cycled out a lot more you know obviously ramping up and coming back from his injury uh, so Hamlin he made a few plays coming downhill in the box against the run which was good to see um, and, and I think that if I were to pick between Johnson and him filling in for Poyer I'd like to see Hamlin I think he's more of a playmaker um, and I think that Jaquan Johnson's uh, special teams abilities actually plays into him like he can make more of an impact there than at the third level especially down the field if we're talking at the third level and passing plays I think Hamlin's got a little more playmaking ability there but the Bills do love Johnson so I like to see those two compete over the next few weeks with Poyer out but today it was definitely Hamlin making plays downhill uh, especially in those run segments and coming from depth um, and he made a really nice play as the run was bouncing outside uh, in one of those segments. They they were sending him on a blitz coming down from the safety spot. And he adjusted, he processed the play, saw that the run was bouncing out wide into his alley and he just strung it wide, blew it up and made a tackle for loss. So he had a really good practice. Um, the other thing of note is that we saw the running backs cycling in with the wide receivers and a lot of their individual drills so Chad Hall does some really cool things with their wide receiver drills 
if they're working on 10 yard in breaking routes, you know, dig routes, he segments them. And you'll hear me talk about this all the time. So he'll break it into two segments. So he'll have two lines. In the first line, he has the guys working on the break. So he'll have them run that 10 yards and focus on breaking down, getting the footwork properly and breaking inside. And the second line, it's working on the entire route. So I like how he does that. And we got to see the running backs work in there with uh, the wide receivers and some of those segments on those uh, in-breaking routes. And of course, those could be when they are split out wide uh, and running those in-breaking routes, or it's the same thing coming from the backfield, just running um, you know, a little five to seven yard in-breaking route from the backyard alignment. So uh, it was nice to see most of the running backs working in with the wide receivers, getting some of those uh, coaching points that are needed from the wide receiver coach, Chad Hall, and uh, Obviously, they're going to be an integral part of the Bills' passing game this year. Uh, when we're talking from backyard, uh, back alignments in the backfield, but also out wide, uh, that's definitely been one of the uh, finer notes uh, from uh, the first couple weeks of uh, training camp. So, again, if you're not an insider, I suggest you sign up and join the Slack community, the Cover One community. Uh, we have a really cool group, uh, a really tight-knit community that talks football all day in the Slack channel. And not just football, but there are other things in there. Analytics, there are different channels that you can get into um, aside from football. And we just are, are really proud with the community that we built. And uh, we're offering some new options. Uh, you know, the live blogging and live updates. Uh, it's going to be something that we're going to be rolling out the entire season. And, and that starts again with tomorrow. For the blue and red scrimmage, myself, Greg, and Anthony Prohaska will be on scene at the scrimmage, and we're going to be live blogging uh, on the website, and a lot of our content's going to be there. So to stay up to date on what's happening at the scrimmage, become an insider. Again, we couldn't do this without you. So uh, you know, we're begging you that you uh, find some of the quality content, the in-depth content, whether it's written or the podcast on our Cover One YouTube channel. We hope that you guys do appreciate the hard work that goes into this um, and what it takes to create this stuff. This is not easy um, to do uh, when you have you know 18 or 19 guys so for us to coordinate this. So um, you know we hope that you can see the value that we offer uh, as a brand. And uh, so I appreciate you guys tuning into this recap on my way from uh, Rochester to Buffalo, actually Lockport, uh, going to visit the family in Lockport. That's where I grew up. Uh, but again, get to CoverOne.net, get to the Cover One YouTube channel. And on behalf of Cover One, I'm your host of the film room, Eric Turner, and we will see you tomorrow.